Questions, Deputy Matty McGrath, three minutes. Let's go on, Colonel. Taoiseach, the issue of rural crime and the devastating harm it does to the fabric of rural, uh, rural communities is still a matter of significant and indeed ongoing huge concerns. At a packed meeting held recently in Tumivara and County Tipperary, the anger was palpable. The people who attended expressed their view that nothing has effectively changed in the last number of years. They still feel as vulnerable as ever. They still think there are not enough guarantee and guard resources, and they still think that there are not enough meaningful sanctions uh, in place against those who repeatedly commit these types of heinous crimes. One of the related issues that emerged, however, was a clear sense that the legal aid process in this state is broken. People in rural Ireland feel the system is uh, stacked against them, and I think totally against them. In terms of costs, the numbers are truly staggering, Taoiseach. I would even go further and say that the costs associated with uh, civil and criminal legal aid are utterly obscene and unjustifiable. The Minister for Justice has confirmed to me in a parliamentary reply that over 605 million euro has been allocated for legal aid since 2011 to 2017. These numbers are simply astonishing and demonstrate that absolutely nothing is being done to reduce the outlandish fees being paid to provide this service. The information I have received shows that the costs of criminal and, and, and legal aid for, every, um, for the years covering the period of 11 to 17 has ranged from 49 million annually to 58 million annually, each year. It's staggering. Uh, this is what at the, this is, was at a time when Garda stations were being closed, left, right and centre, throughout the country, and when Garda overtime was cut drastically in temporary, and when Garda vehicles weren't available for the Garda or the tools of the trade, and uh, it had been constantly reviewed everything that could cut, cut, cut backs. The average cost during the same period for civil legal aid shows that it never dropped below 30 million per year. 30 million per year. Just imagine what that could do, or half it, to support uh, and resource our Gardaí who do a tremendous job day and night, under resource and under numbers. Indeed, there was nine million of an increase from the costs in 2011 to the costs incurred in seven, 2017. So it's growing steadily. A nice little economy for certain people. The former Minister of Justice, Francis Fitzgerald, promised as far back as September 2016 that the Criminal Justice Legal Aid Act uh, 1962 was re being reviewed and that the department was preparing uh, legislation uh, to, secure, um, to update the law and its use powers to secure contributions from depend defendants. More rigorous means testing and stronger sanctions ag against abuses. It's blatantly obvious that none of these have come to pass. None. So there's no will to do it. Instead, what we are witnessing is the fleecing of the nation's resources by a criminal element that, uh, the, um, and the absolute abuse of the system that, although designed to protect rights, is now uh, erratically undermining the safety of their communities, entire communities. Tishuk, if we continue at the rate we are, the provision of legal aid will have cost us over a billion euro within another few years. That is at a time when resources of the state will already be under significant pressure due to the full uh, fallout from Brexit and the possible damage to the Euro rural economy from the Mercosur deal. I nearly finished, just one, uh, from no matter what, and Moshe the Hall. Will you therefore, Taoiseach, prioritise a full and immediate reform of the system so that the costs can be um, contained, but more importantly, that criminals who repeatedly terrorise rural communities do not feel as if they have um, a Deputy never ending pot of legal resources for? Attack to attack rural communities. Thanks very much, Deputy. Uh, crime and the fear of crime is a matter of great concern to communities all over our state. Uh, and there are victims of crime, unfortunately, all over our state. And I don't think we should see this uh, as a rural versus urban issue. Uh, yes, we have a serious problem with rural crime, but I represent an urban constituency, as do so many people here. And I can assure you that the threats and fear of crime is as worrisome in West Dublin as it is in West Tipperary. And I think it's wrong to characterise this in the context uh, of a rural versus urban divide that doesn't exist when it comes to crime. Sadly, uh, crime levels are actually higher in urban areas than they are uh, in, uh, in, in, in rural areas. In terms of what's being done, uh, government is investing in our Gardaí. Our Garda numbers have now increased to 14,000, uh, the highest in a very long period of time. We've extended armed support units across all six Garda regions. We've also increased the budget of the Gardaí to 1.76 billion, which is the highest Garda budget ever. And we're implementing the recommendations of the O'Toole Commission on the future of policing to ensure that we have a more modern and more fit-for-purpose uh, police service. Uh, and that implementation 
uh, which is coordinated by my department, is very much underway uh, and very much happening um, on, on track. In terms of legal aid, um, the cost of it is very high, uh, and I agree with you on that. Um, and we have to find a right balance here. On one level, we need to protect the taxpayer from facing very high costs and having to pay very high legal fees for others. On the other hand, we need to have a justice system that ensures that people have representation in court, that they do get a fair trial. And we do see instances in other countries whereby uh, you have court cases and criminal cases uh, which are very much stacked against the accused. And bear in mind, anyone is innocent in a democracy until they're proven guilty. And uh, I don't know if you've, you may have seen the film If Beale Street Can Talk. I'm not sure if you've see, seen that movie. But it gives you an example of what happens in other countries uh, where there is an inequality in the courts uh, and the accused is uh, not given proper legal representation uh, or is represented by a public defender, uh, somebody who uh, is on a low salary uh, or somebody who is um, not of the same standard as the prosecution. And in a democracy, uh, in a free country, the right to a fair trial uh, is a really important thing that I wouldn't want us to give up. And we particularly could see vulnerable people, vulnerable communities and minority communities uh, ending up uh, getting an unfair outcome from courts uh, if the system was stacked up against them. I know it's a complicated area, but it's something we need to tread carefully on because everyone is innocent until proven guilty and everyone is entitled to fair representation in court. TC, your reply is quite frivolous. I never suggested that there wasn't crime in Dublin. We turn on the news any day of the week, we see how, how horrific it is. But you will get back up, and all the members of the force will tell you, they'll get back up within minutes from another station or other resources. You could wait two hours in Carrick and Shore. You could wait three hours in Ballaparin or in places like Tumi Valor to get assistance. This is the difference. We don't have the numbers there. And I never suggested that people weren't innocent and proven guilty. So be honest here and tackle the scourge and the waste and the abuse of free legal aid. I believe in free legal aid, of course I do, but two strikes and you're out. And we have promises by Minister Flanagan when she was Minister, uh, Minister, uh, Minister, um, um, Minister Fitzgerald, now gone to Europe, and I wish her well, that we would reform this. It's not reformed, and there's something blocking it from being reformed. It's an absolute scandal to go into any court any day of the week and see it carry on, on the steps outside, on the inside inside, and what's going on, and marauding gangs getting money, uh, getting the best of liars, and the ordinary victims have to pay for the, for the legal representation and pay dearly for it, and are not able to afford it, and can only cut the clock according to their measure, as the count co last count caller told me. This is just ridiculous, and the amount of money on, on legal while well, people have been terrorised in their homes by these marauding gangs. So don't try and pit me as acting for rule and forgetting about the, 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 the city. Don't try and pit me as not saying that people are entitled to legal aid. Of course they are. Innocent proven guilty is very important to me. I know all about that. But please deal with the situation and trotting out figures of the resources. We just don't have the resources and cut out the waste that's going on and tackling the fat cats for getting the money. You don't want to touch them at all. Any of the bigger parties don't because that's where the rot is. Give the teacher an opportunity to respond. Thank you, Lassie Cord. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if I picked up a, a question there, but I do want to acknowledge that the cost of legal aid uh, is very high, uh, and I want to acknowledge the fact that the Deputy acknowledges that people are innocent until proven guilty uh, and are entitled to legal representation, uh, even if it's the third or fourth time that they're accused. Uh, this matter is uh, being studied by the Minister. Uh, he is exploring means by which we may be able to reduce uh, the cost of legal aid. Uh, but there are also constitutional issues as well, uh, because people in our constitution have a right to access to the courts. Uh, and, uh, and we need to bear that in mind as well.